Yes, we are so thankful that you guys tuned in tonight to be with us and to watch our dance and to hear some of our testimonies. It's just so exciting what God has brought us through. And the name of our group is called out and our church that we um, are in is City on a Hill and it is so awesome and we're so excited. But the reason why we started called out is because each and every one of us has been called out of something. Everybody that serves the Lord has been, he has called us out of the darkness and brought us into his marvelous yes. light. We each and every one of us have a testimony, but one of the most amazing things about God is he calls you out so that he can bring you in to his kingdom purpose for your life. So we come here today to encourage you. I don't know what you've been through, but no matter what you're going through or what you've been through, one of us here assembled here today has already been called out of that situation and brought into his kingdom purpose for our life. And the end of the song where it says, but the Lord, that gets me fired up every time I hear it as Brandon says, but the Lord, because when I was reading in the Bible at, at where it says that it's in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse eight, and it's at a time when Jeremiah was being so persecuted, persecuted by people he loved. So many times we have things come up against us. Even people we love persecute us. We might struggle with addiction. You might be struggling with addiction. God has brought me out. You might be struggling with sickness. There's people God God has brought out no matter what you're struggling with in Jeremiah but he said that he tried not to speak the Lord's name but there was a fire in his mouth a fire shut up in his bones and he could not be quiet and he goes on to say that all these things were coming against him but the Lord was beside me like a mighty warrior and I have some good news for you tonight I don't know what you're going through or what you're struggling with but the Lord is beside you like a mighty warrior. And no matter what you're struggling with, he is your defense. He is your fighter. And as we come to you tonight and you watch this program, I hope that you are touched and blessed as we have been delivered from so many things and called out to, be, to perform his purpose. And as you give God praise and praise the Lord and get into this, praise God like uh, you're on fire because the Bible says that when you praise the Lord, that he will set an ambush against your enemies. So as you praise the Lord tonight, I pray that you will close your eyes and picture God setting his angels around you and setting an ambush against your enemies. And he will drive back the forces of darkness, drive back that spirit of addiction that's trying to hold you back, drive back that spirit of cancer that's trying Trying to hold you back. Drive back that spirit of depression that is trying to hold you back. But the Lord stands beside of you like a mighty warrior. Thank you.
my name is Brandon Conley. I'm Sarah Conley, his wife. And we're going to tell you a little bit of our testimony in, in 2012. Um, it was a rough year for us. In April, we ended up having a, a miscarriage, and and God was dealing with us, and God was pushing on us, and God was beginning to move in our life and begin to lead us into greater things and things we didn't even know was about to happen. But, but now that we look back, we've seen what God's done. We've seen the power and the greatness He's poured out upon us. In August of 2012, I was at work working, and I, I was working around a crane, and, and a beam attached to the crane come up and hit me in the face, and I, I had to have... Um, surgery on my face. I had to have about a one inch by four inch strip. And at this time, I didn't know what God was doing. I didn't know the great things He was pouring into my life. And after I almost died, I began to suffer with the spirit of fear. I began to suffer with the spirit of anguish, thinking that I couldn't live each day, thinking that something was going to happen to me and something was going to happen to my wife. And, and I just began to, I began to cry out to God. And I began to come unto God. And, and the power of God touched me. And the power of God came to me. And as she said, but the Lord came unto me. And and I was afraid no more. I had fear no more because of the greatness of our God. And I just praise Him so much for getting them out of us. But there's also two parts to this story. And my, that the doctor said that through this situation, us having a miscarriage, we weren't going to be able to have a child. That I, wasn't, I couldn't have a child. And also my wife couldn't have a child. It was a perfect storm. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about what she went through. Praise God. Yes. I, I went through a terrible time being told I couldn't have children. I basically had a miscarriage, and then everything that happened made me not be able to have children, they said. But as you can see, that God proved that wrong. Amen. Amen. Um, and as I went through it, I was told that I had the uterine lining of an 80-year-old woman and that I would never be able to have kids. And if I did get pregnant, that I wouldn't be able to hold them or support them. And as he went through it with me, he went to the doctor. They told him his sperm count was so low that he would never be able to have children either. There was no way us together could have a baby. And we just couldn't give up on that. We knew that God could provide and Amen. that he, he always gives children to everybody. It says to be fruitful and multiply to everyone. And we just couldn't give up hope on that. And today we're 25 weeks pregnant. With a little girl. Yeah, I just, I just praise God so much for it because I've been to that, that sonogram room and I've seen that baby that they said we couldn't have his face. And I've seen the power that God's poured out upon us. And I just want you to know if you're out there and there's something somebody's telling you is impossible, there's something somebody's telling you that you can't do or can't be done, that we serve a God that can do it. We serve a God that can unleash powerful things in your life, can set you free from addiction or any kind of thing you're trapped under, any kind of bondage you're inside of. I just want you to know that God's about to do a great thing for you and all you got to do is cry out to a God that loves you and has a calling and a purpose inside of you and a great thing for you to do. Praise God. Hey, my name is Debbie Gentry and we, like Summer said, are a part of City on a Hill. Our pastors, Barry and Carlene, um, just awesome, awesome woman and man of God and we're just proud to represent God here tonight and to represent City on a Hill. And we thank the Lord that He has opened this door for us. He is opening doors for us to be called out into the field to tell of the goodness and of the grace and the mercy and the healing God that we serve. Back in May, I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, just had a lot going on in my mind at that time, not knowing where to go, what to do, but the Lord, <laughs> but the Lord directed my path and my husband Paul and we, we prayed and we asked God what to do and men and women of God surrounded us. This called out group surrounded us with prayer and I just thank God for everyone that, that fed us the word of God at that time when we were not able to feed ourselves because of just distress. But I'm telling you, God gave us a peace that passeth all understanding. And he kept our minds. And we went to Houston, Texas. And I had, I'm going to say we, because when you're a husband and wife and you go through this, you go through it together. It's not just uh, about me, but it was about both of us. But we went through this. We went through treatments. But, you know, through it all, it was not even about us. It was about God. It was about His miraculous healing power. It was about Him placing us in a place where we can minister to other people. And when you do that, when you, our pastor always says this, you take care of God's business, 
He will take care of your business. So he took care of our business in so many ways. And I was healed. I'm healed. And I just give God praise. But I want to share with you a few things that God led us to do in that time. First of all, uh, we were to position ourselves. And when you position yourself, it is in the Word of God. And it's, it's on your knees in prayer. That's where your position is. Uh, to renew our minds. And that was to stay in the Word um, of God at all times. Um, to call the prayer warriors. To call the prayer warriors. If you're sick and in need, you call the prayer warriors. You call the men and women of God that you know will stand with you and pray with you. To call the angels. You know, we have ministering angels that will minister to us in our time of need. Um, I had everybody and every one that I could find to lay hands on me. Uh, the little children at church, I went to the Sunday school rooms and had them lay their hands on me and pray for me. And I thank God for that. And, and the last thing was to stay positive. You have to stay positive. You cannot let the enemy get in your head and tell you that, you, that you're not going to make it. You get in the Word of God and you listen to what the scriptures tell you. And it says that you're an overcomer by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb that shed His blood for you. We, have, we serve a healing God. We serve a mighty God. We serve the everlasting God. We serve the King of kings. So when you, if you're facing this, this cancer, any, any kind of sickness, um, you remember that God is on your side and He is fighting for you. Don't you give up. Don't you turn around. Don't you look back. And one more thing that God told me to do was give Him a crazy praise. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to continue doing is giving Him a crazy praise because He is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. God bless you. God bless you and be healed in the name of Jesus. Michelle Lockhart and I was first called out of darkness into His marvelous light years ago and thus began the journey of finding out my identity in Christ. And what an amazing journey. Ups and downs, going through mountains I never dreamed I would face. But the Lord showed himself every time through every battle. Um, the greatest battle that I came through most recent was um, the enemy coming in. Well, before I even get to that, I'll just say I didn't even know how to, um, I didn't know anything about the word of God when I first came into this. And he taught me how to walk and how to talk, how to be a mother how to live my life but he gave me the desire to do it I didn't have to make myself do it like he stripped things off of my life immediately substances that I used to use to cover up the pain from early childhood substances that I thought you know would make me feel good I just didn't need anymore I had no desire immediately when I gave my heart to the Lord and I know it don't work like that for everybody and I had to press through other stuff through my walk with God but when you're walking this journey and you get closer to finding out your identity in Christ, the enemy, he, he begins to really begin to press. And he tries to come in when you're weak. He finds a weak point and he begins to hit on that, hit on that a lot. And then once you are weak, then he comes in like a flood. You know, um, just like the scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And that's what he did for me. But I was diagnosed with depression, and I had anxiety, panic attacks, fear gripped me. I was terrified of people. I was agoraphobic. I didn't want to leave my house. It was, it was just, it was, a, it was so difficult to leave my house just to go to the doctor. I remember the doctor had to clear out the waiting room one time for me to go out because I was having a panic attack that I had to walk out of that office and go into the waiting room to get to my car to try to drive home because I was having panic attacks. Fear had gripped me. The spirit of the enemy had gripped me. But, and it got worse than that. It got much worse than that. But during that time, I, I ended up actually sitting like a vegetable in my house with, um, I couldn't stand any sound, and I just stared out the window. I sat like a vegetable. But during that time, I, I couldn't even read my Bible anymore. But just like the dance that we just did in the song, it says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
out of my belly through that, I began, the Spirit of the Lord began to bring up Scripture that had been hidden on the inside of me, that he had hidden, placed on the inside of me. And he began to bring that up to me. And when the Spirit of the Lord brought that up, it was like I could feel it coming up out of me. And when it did, it came out of my mouth. And when it came out of my mouth, I gained strength. And every time I got the word out, I got stronger. And then I got focused, and I was able to get in my Bible. And, I, and that's when the Lord taught me, how to become stronger, how to become a great woman of God, and it was, and how to really find my identity. It was to get in that word and be who he has called us to be, put on the armor of God, speak that scripture over yourself, anoint yourself with oil, and get deliverance. When you believe the word, you get delivered. When you fully trust it. You know, I, they told me I was going to be depressed for the rest of my life. They said that even with medication, you're still it's not going, it's just going to take the edge off. You're not going to be set for it. You're not, you're never going to be, you're going to be depressed for the rest of your life. And so you put a little bit of faith to what you hear when, you know, when you hear it, because, and also you think that, well, they know, they see me, but you know, when the spirit of the Lord lives on the inside of you, he doesn't let you come in agreement with a lie of the enemy. You just can't come in agreement with it. And finally, I, I realized that that was the lie. And I began, you know, to, to just press into that word, press into that word. And what he did for me then was he gave me the spirit of a David worshiper. And I would stand in my living room and praise him for my healing when I couldn't even brush my hair yet. And I just praised him. And he, did, he just, I, I praised him all over my living room. I knew I was healed in my spirit, even though it hadn't showed in my body yet. But I was so thankful, and I knew, I knew that it was going to be a great and mighty testimony. I knew I had been set free. So if you think that what you're going through is bad right now, it's just a season, and you are going to be delivered if you will press in and believe and put on that armor of God because you've got to do it for yourself because nobody else can do it for you. We can lay hands on you, and we can pray for you, and, we, and, and that can, can do a great work for you, but it's got to come from within you. The Spirit of the Lord on the inside of you, you've got to let it come out. And you have got to believe that word for your deliverance. And you will be delivered. His word is true. <laughs> I just praise him today. Hi, my name is Kathy. And I want to tell you guys about a man that I met when I was 10 years old laying in a hospital bed. And his name is Jesus. And he took a little girl that had an abscess on her neck that was pressing on her juggler vein. And he gave her life. And then after that... The devil has come against this little girl, and that little girl was me. And he came against her, and he took her down a long road. And Jesus told me when I was laying in that bed that he was not done with me, that he had something for me. But I couldn't understand why, why, Lord, why would you put me through all this torment that the devil's put upon me? Because I've struggled in my mind. I've struggled in my body for years and years and years. And here I am, 40 years old. And let me tell you, there were times when I was a teenager that I strayed away from God. I was baptized when I was 15 years old and, you know, started serving the Lord. But then as all teenagers do, you get that little wild streak in you and you go away from him for a while. And uh, then when I started having babies, I decided, you know, I need to go back to him because I remember what it's like to grow up in a church. And I knew my babies needed that. And I had to go back to him. But you know what? Back in my early days, I was just saved. I was afraid of going to hell was what was the kind of saved that I was. I wasn't saved and uh, in love with Jesus like I am now. Now I'm in love with a man and a savior that not only does he... Uh, does he comfort me? Not only does he supply my needs, but he's forgiven every sin that I've ever committed. Let me tell you, this body is a temple, and I have drugged that body down myself. No devil did it to me. I did it myself, and I defiled that temple. But you know what? He loved me so much that even though I desecrated his most holy thing, that he picked me back up, and he made it holy again. And he said, you were my child, and back at back in that hospital bed I planted a thing in you I planted it in you before you were ever born and you know he took that seed that he planted and he put it down in the ground and he had to pile some dirt up on it man had to put his dirt up on it and then you know everything that you plant has to have a little bit of fertilizer in on top of it and y'all know what I mean by that man puts his fertilizer in on it and I've went through some things that that were pretty bad and 
then God sent the rain down upon it. And that rain is what made this child and this seed grow because God saw something that even though the devils tried to kill it out and the devils tried to distinguish the fire that God put inside of me at a young age, God said, there's something inside of you and I've chose you because I did not choose him. I did not walk into a church and say, I'm going to choose to follow Christ. Christ chose me before I was ever born because he knew that the devil couldn't quiet this big mouth. He knew that I was going to go out and I was going to speak his word and I was going to write his word. He knew that there would be a thing called the internet that I would get on and I would type his word and I would reach people and that I would talk to people and that I would go and I would teach children in church and that I would put on plays and that I would write books and that I would just, I wouldn't be quiet about what good the Lord has done for me. And I'm going to keep testifying and praising him and telling people about the Lord because he has not only healed my body from disease, but he's also done the most miraculous thing is healing me spiritually, bringing me closer to him, healing my mind. And he is everyone that I testify to get something out of that. They get a healing out of that. They take a little piece of that healing home with them and then they praise the Lord and they start working on their own healing. And I just want to give him the praise and give him the honor and I want to lift him up and magnify him tonight and I want to just say that God bless you if you're watching this. If you don't have a home church, come to City on a Hill. We'd be glad to have you. We love you. Lord, we just thank you for tuning in with us today and we hope that you have been encouraged and lifted up. Um, we've all been through battles here. We've been through from sickness to drug addiction to barren women to the men and we, uh, the man and woman, Brennan and Sarah, wasn't supposed to have children, and she's due in May. Right, standing here beside me is Sarah, who God brought her out of darkness. He delivered her from drugs, and I don't have time to tell you what I've been through because it's a long story. But I'm here to tell you today: had it not been for God, who was on my side, I would have died a long time ago. And I just give Him praise and honor and glory. And today, I just want to ask you: if you don't know the Lord, if you haven't accepted the Lord, as your Savior, then today is the day the Lord has made. The day is the day he, he divine. It's a divine appointment that God has with you today. It is not by accident or by chance that you tuned into this TV today, but it was designed by God. Your salvation, your healing, your deliverance. God is the God of all things. The impossible is possible with Him. So if you don't know the Lord, I just ask that you just bow your head and repeat after us, Father. Father God, I just ask you that you come into my heart. Lord, that you would just cleanse me of all unrighteousness. God, show me the way. Show me how to live. Show me, Lord, what you would have me to do. If you believe this, if you've said this and you repented of your sins, you believe Jesus died for you and rose on the third day, honey, you are on your way to heaven. God loves you, and we hope that you have been encouraged and lifted up today. We love you, and God loves you.